How's it going, future voters of Sean Gannon, future president of the United States of America? And today, we're going to learn how to brew beer. I've been brewing beer for a while and by no means am an expert at brewing beer. But what I'm going to do here is use a kit from Northern Brewer. And this is the first time actually I've used this. This is a dry Irish stout extract kit. This is one of the easiest ways to start brewing. This is the way that everyone gets into brewing beer. They use these kits and I usually find them pretty cheap online when they're on sale. So when a sale happens, I'll get you know, three or four packs and it'll last me a while. Now I'm gonna go through how I've adapted my system, but you can, I'll tell you ways that you can make it cheaper, easier and stuff. I'll be kegging my beer afterwards, but you can do the same thing with bottles. Uh, but I'm gonna show you that you don't really need a lot of money to brew beer and it's pretty easy to get started. So let's go over what we're gonna be using today. So there's a few things that you need to start with. Uh, this is a, I think, four gallon pot. What does it say on the bottom? Uh, 20 quart, so that's 18.9 liters, something like that. You just need above a three gallon pot for this stuff. Um, you have, I have extra things from something else from Pico Brew, uh, but I use this for just filling up, measuring, and then cleaning supplies. Uh, main cleaner I use is the star sand. It's one of the best things. I can't believe I went so long without using it. Star sand to clean everything that you need to. But the beginning of this, we do not need it to clean it really. I mean, this is kind of clean, but the boiling process will clean everything. I have my the fermenter we'll be using later. This is a Mr. Beer kit I got from a family friend. Uh, and. Any little plastic tub will do. It has a sealed airlock, but you can get those online pretty cheap, as well as probably used. Main thing though we will have is our kit, like I said, from Northern Brewer. When you open the kit up, you're gonna be getting some different items. Paper, kind of hold it together. You'll be getting a cheesecloth that you'll be putting a dry stout or their grain uh, blend they'll have in there, whatever the kit is and that we're gonna be steeping that first. Then we'll have hops for the ingredients, different types of hops. This will have that many hops in it. And depending on the recipe, you'll have a malt uh, syrup extract here. Uh, sometimes there's two different ones in there. Sometimes we'll have some also some dry uh, extract as well. And lastly, they have the instructions in here that is pretty foolproof to follow. So the first thing I'm going to be doing now is getting from the instructions, I'm most likely, let's just double check here, correct, 2.5 gallons of water into this bucket. So my um, pot here doesn't have markings to measure 2.5 gallons, but this one does, so I'll be measuring that out, pouring it in here, and we'll start the boiling process. So right now I'm just going to give a quick rinse to my pot, just to see if there's any dust. It's not really as important right now, like I said, we'll be cleaning this, uh, or by boiling it, it'll be getting rid of any bacteria and stuff. But and I cleaned it after last time I used it, but just kind of get some dust out of there. Uh, so it's not in your beer if there's anything like a hair or something. And the same thing with this one here. Rinse this out here, just a quick little rinse. From there. And now we're gonna fill this up. This is the fill line here is um, 1.25 gallons. So doing two of those, do the math. It's 2.5 gallons. So, time to fill that up. Here we got 2.5 gallons. Time to turn on the stove. Large element on high. Get that going. Put the top on. That I should probably rinse off. Do a quick little rinse. go. Top on. Get hot faster. Now it's time to go get the uh, grains. Right. So the grains come in this and then I have a little cheesecloth here. So what I do is I'll open this up pretty easy. Follow the instructions. And put this in the cheesecloth. Now I, uh, when this is all done, I will save my grains. If I can open this. Kind of stuck here. Come on. There we go. Oh, not the easiest to open sometimes. There we go. All right. Anyway, put the cheesecloth around the bag. Now this will be dusty. Some uh, dust will come out, so that's why I use this bowl underneath it. So I put this cheesecloth around it. Make sure I got it all. 
flip it over, dump it in. Mm. Nice stout smell. Now when you tie the cheesecloth here, don't make the mistake that I did the first time and tie it really tight up here. You want to give it some space, so I make a knot, just a single knot is all you'll need, near the end. And you try to move it so it's near the top, right here. There, but you still want to make it tight so all the grains will come out, because that would be annoying. But yeah, there's some dust coming out here, I'm just moving it around a little bit. Not much, but you can see there's some dust that will come out here. This one's actually less than other ones I've done. Now the recipe here says uh, to steep it for 20 minutes, or until it hits 170 degrees or until the water hits 20, or 170 degrees. So what I'm going to do now is as it's heating up, I'm just going to put this in here and let it steep as well. And I'll get a, um, where's my ladle? Somewhere. Where's my ladle? I don't know. I'll find my ladle somewhere and I'll be stirring it around in a second. Uh, and kind of stir it occasionally. Now when you the main grain brewers, uh, there's the exact temperature you put it in for exact time. But since most of this is coming from the extract, I don't really worry about that. Um, you'll get some of the flavors. Most of the flavors are going to come from the liquid syrup extract. This is making it like a semi-grain kit there. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to let it get up to 170 degrees, then we'll be taking it out. So as you can see, this water is still clearly cold, but the grains are in there. So I'm going to slowly be moving it around. You can slowly see some of the uh, flavors coming out. And it definitely smells like a stout, which is kind of cool. Uh, but more flavors and more, um, like almost like you're steeping a tea bag, will come out more as it's heating up. This is going to take a while to heat up. I have a slow stove. So just be patient with it. And if it's in the afternoon, have a beer. I mean, or have a beer whenever you want. I'm still finishing my coffee. So what I'm doing now is getting the water hot. I'm going to pour it in this bucket. And uh, I find this syrup. The extract syrup comes out a lot easier when it's been sitting in hot water or warm water. So I put my sink to the hottest temperature it is, put it in here while it's going. There we go. Lost at the hottest temperature. And I just fill it up. It helps loosen everything up, makes it a little easier to get that extract out later. So I have, luckily these, I have a lot of these actually, that makes it easier not to waste too much water, but brings that heat in there. And so I'll fill it up and once it cools down, I'll probably do it one more time. Uh, that should be good enough to get most of the stuff out from there when we get to that process. So brewing beer is all about planning ahead. So speaking of planning ahead, I'm going to start using my star stand and start cleaning my uh, fermenter. So and some other things that we need. So the way this works, you kind of squeeze it and some of the star stand comes up to this little area right here. And then you make sure you have the right amount per your measurements. You pour that in your tub. And this is a different one I have. Like I said, I have many of these. Then I use hot water, I think it's better in there. I just fill it up with the hot water for the amounts that you need. And then anything that gets in here uses it and is clean from bacteria. But it doesn't scrub like soap does. So if it doesn't scrub like soap does, what you want to do is make sure there's no grime on it. And then put it in here, it's a quick clean and it's like doesn't have any taste and you're, you're good to go with that. So we're going to fill this up, we're going to clean some stuff. I actually have a... If I can find it here. So I have uh, an extra cup I'll use to you know, pour things out and then I'll use a specific sponge just using this cleaner. It has a hair on it. Don't use that. <laughs> I know, it's silly, isn't it, Cecilia? Yeah. And so I do that and then actually what I also do is I have another bowl. I'll put some of the solution in. For smaller items that will go, I don't want deep in there, it's easier to get out, so I'll clean them in there. Uh, but I'll use a specific sponge with that and this little cup to transfer things over. So while the thing is going here, I'll be cleaning all the stuff. So you want to make sure you can see, uh, well, make sure you're stirring occasionally. You don't want to stir always, just a little occasionally moving around. But you can see it's getting that nice stout color. It's beautiful. So let's kind of do a little bit uh, there. And soon I'll bring a thermometer and measure it. I know it's not even close to the temperature yet, but soon I'll start measuring to make sure we get there. So I got items in here that are, um, to kind of seal this up. I tossed, I mean, I cleaned these last time I used them uh, pretty well. So now I'm just making sure there's you know, no dust in it, no bacteria still on it. 
We don't really need to do like a deep, deep clean. Same thing with this top part here. But I'm just getting this stuff all kind of cleaned out. Now this inside here, I'll use a sponge. Actually, I'll pour some liquid in here. And just kind of move it around in here. Now, that actually being said, I kind of do a little bit rinse it around here. Watch out for the hole for it to leak out. Most of it out. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I use a sponge, get kind of the outside, the inside lip here, make sure it's on there, and then I'm going to put this back, the assembly back together that's all clean from in here, and I seal it back up. So I kind of set it up. However your assembly is, um, I actually never use the nozzle. I use a a, um, a racking device, but um, or the siphon. I used to, but I do the racking stuff now, so you don't even need this bottom thing. Um, I'm just using what I have. If I had a bucket without this nozzle, it would be great. You just tighten it up. Close. <laughs> make sure it's closed. Don't want to mess that up. And make sure it's tight enough that's not going to leak. At one point, one of my gaskets was a little loose or cracked, and I get a new one. It looks slowly leaking. But it should be pretty good. It doesn't be like insanely tight. Now I'll add a little more in here. Okay. I'm kind of filling it up just a little bit. I'll be shaking it around. It might be a little overkill, but sometimes I'll get like the top part lift just a little bit from the sponge. Nothing fantastic here because that's the only part that's going to be touching the beer. I'll get the top I have here, make sure that's all clean. Put it in there. Again, like I said, I already like rinsed them all out or washed it last time, so it's just the bacteria and stuff now. Put this together, and what I'm going to actually do here is I'm kind of going to shake it up a little bit. Not like crazy because there's a full the whole top. This makes it easier oh to just to clean it. I just move it around. I can get make sure everything on the inside is all clean here. And it sure beats scrubbing it all. You just got to make sure it just touches everything here. Great. Take the top back off. And I'll clean that one more time before I put it in there. Just, just making sure this part's clean from the time it comes. I'll put it over on the counter. Oh, there, out of the way. But it just saves a step because I will actually be chilling that beer in my sink. All right. Mm. Smells like a stout. So just double checking the measurement here, but I just checked it and it's uh, 107 degrees about. Right now, just kind of checking it. It's getting up there. Da, 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 da. Now that's 170 degrees. It's there basically. I'm waiting for the thermometer and 170. Great. So I don't need the thermometer anymore because the rest of it is just going to be a boil. So what I do now is I'm going to take the grains out here, but I still think there's some more, um, I am using a knife or a fork for this, because I feel like the fork gets the edge of the cheesecloth. But you can see like a lot of drips when you're coming out here. So I put this, I want to make sure I get all those juices out here. So I kind of rest it for a little bit. I do not throw these grains away. I mean, you can, uh, but my sister and brother both have chickens and so these chicken, uh, the chickens love this grain. So if you have someone you know who has chickens, they love it. Or if you have chickens, it's great. Maybe one day we'll have chickens and then we can give them all these extra grains. It's a nice treat. They, they're nice and sugary. They love it. There. So I'm just trying to get most of the juices out here. Um, and I'll probably double check the when I put it in that um, bowl at the end. I see if there's any extras. I don't like to waste any of the, this nice malt juice here. Get some extra there. Mm, come on. Just trying to get the last one. <laughs> well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> All right, so now we do the process over again. So, note to self, pay attention, and don't do that. I think it's only happened one, one time before, so. Hey, this, I'm not gonna give you just a highlight reel here. This is the real deal stuff. 
purpose. You know, I'm not faking it. So? The splash means you care. I gotta clean that up before it gets all sticky everywhere. So I'll be cleaning that up. Don't let beer just sit around your stove top because it is sugary sticky and um, yeah, it's sticky. Guess, guess, keep an eye on it because it could smell <laughs> out. You're right, Cecilia. I should keep an eye on it. It would splash everywhere. Oh man, it's everywhere. It looks, it looks like coffee's everywhere. It looks like he just made a big mess. Yeah, I made a big mess, Cecilia. Cause, but most of the time, right. we did it. Well, don't. now I'm not gonna try to get everything out, so I'm gonna put it in the bucket first here, or in this little bowl, and then uh, I'll see if there's enough juice left, or I'll pour it in later. But if not, that'll be it. All right, now it's time to clean up. Or put this top back on. Let's see, top back on. We need to get this to a boil. Like I kept the heat on, but I need to get it to a boil, and so now it's time to clean. So there's not much juices that are coming out here. Uh, from the grains that I spilled everywhere. So I'm not really worried about it, pouring it back in. Um, but I put the top back on so it boils, gets to boil faster. But right now we're gonna try to get it to a boil as fast as we can. And then we're gonna add the extract in, which probably has cooled off some. So I'm gonna re-put hot water in here to make sure it's nice and warm. Uh, but we're gonna get this to a boil. So now we play the waiting game. It shouldn't be too much longer. So we're now getting at a boil here which is great. And we're supposed to put the, um, yeah, put this, I'll put it over here. Don't touch it, just say it's hot. It's warm, okay? So they want, you're supposed to take it off the burner. Sometimes I do that and it's a little annoying because uh, it takes a while to heat back up, but I'll follow the instructions this time. Take it off the burner. And it's still gonna be pretty hot. And now we're gonna put the malt extract in. I have right here. Uh, Dump all that water out. That anymore. Okay, now this part's gonna be tricky. Usually I need my wife to help me. It's behind the camera. I mean, you doesn't have to, it just makes it easier. Right. So, I have to, this thing could can peel off, but it's just easier to cut it. The extract. What's that? Malt extract. Mm -hmm. Dangerous game. Don't do that. <laughs> Have some of my beer? Nice. Never mind. <laughs> I was about to say something inappropriate. <laughs> my wife loves when I leave things to my beer. Alright, so I'm going to pour this in here and she's going to stir it as we pour it in. Get all that nice gloopy extract syrup. Can I see it, Mommy? You can see it right here, right? Don't get too close. It's kind of hot though. Don't need a boiling pot of water to fall. Mm -hmm. Mommy, I want some milk. <laughs> yeah, I admit it, honey. Do you drink beer? No. Do you drink milk? No. Oh, then you don't need any milk. No, I well, All right. somehow I'm going to drink So what I do now is I'll put, make sure there's hot water coming out. I'll put a little hot water in here. This is going to last this out. Oh, man, I can feel my beard is a little sticky. Hot water. Hot water. Is that? See? I don't always plan things ahead of time better. Uh, Daddy, I'm dancing. Hot. I'm dancing? I don't know if I'm dancing. My leg hurts, so I'm like hobbling. Why are you putting long hair? There you go. So fill some hot water. Alright, put this on top, shake it up. Just get the last bits out. I'll just be careful, it will leak out some of like a watertight seal. You see, I'm getting most of the extract out. Here. There you go. And then I just pour that frothy milk looking extract in here. And we're good. You're pouring it down? Yeah. Where else would I put it? Now I'm going to rinse this out so I can put it recycling. 
here. You can keep adding more water if you want. You can make sure you get all of it. Um, I just don't like to make the pot too full because the more gallons that are hot, the less cold water you can add. It just takes longer to cool off. So, because at the end we're going to add cold water to the fermenter to make sure it's the right temperature for yeast. So now, this is all cleaned out. Time for the recycling bed. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and rethink. All right, now we're going to put it back on the burner. Slide it on over. Turn the burner back on. Full blast. Get it to a boil again. And then we're going to add the hops. Put the top back on. Is this hot still? A little hot. So now we're at a boil. We're going to time to add the hops and set a timer for 60 minutes. Now, one thing item I do have which I recommend is, is actually kind of nice, the hop basket. Uh, it's not perfect, it won't block everything that comes through, but I like to put this in here, and don't worry, the heat will sanitize it, so you're fine with that, you don't like really sanitize this here. Uh, I'll just do a quick rinse, why not, just in case there's any like, dust or something. But I cleaned it last time after I used it. But what this does, it just fits on the inside here, and then I put the hops in, so the recipe, yeah, the recipe has, says two of these bags, that's it, for full 60 minutes, pretty easy. Um, mm, cluster hops, can I smell it? Yeah. So we're gonna come and get a shot of it going in. Just carry the whole thing. So you can. So you can see the hot basket here. It's not a full boil, I should have waited a little longer, but it's all right. So it'll get hot in a second. So I'm put it in here. And it fills in. Let's boil it. I'm gonna do the other one. Now sometimes you have to take a when it's in the hot basket. Um, you'll have to use a fork or something to kind of stir it around within there. You can see here, hopefully, that it uh, doesn't go in all the way. So I'm gonna do it. Take a fork, move it around. Now you don't have to use this hot basket. I didn't use it for the longest time, and that's let the hops go in here. But I found by doing that. Um, it got kind of messy and hops were everywhere. It was just kind of annoying to deal with. This will still will have a mess, but it, um, it's less of a mess. So that's nice. So anyway, um, just stirring this around a little bit. Occasionally I'll be stirring it to make sure the hops are just getting within the beer and the boil. But now we're going to have to get to a vigorous boil for a solid of 60 minutes. So I'm going to put the top back on to make sure it gets to that boil. And then you can kind of turn the temperature down some just to make sure it's boiling. You'll find the balance, whatever your stove top is. We'll set a timer for 60 minutes here. So, hey Siri, set a timer for 60 minutes. Your timer is set for one hour. Now we play the waiting game. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, it's been 60 minutes. Of a boil with all the hops. I'm gonna take the top off here. I'm gonna turn it off too. Top off, let all that steam out. And this moment here, depending on how dirty it is, but I'm gonna take it off the heat so it's pulling off. I'm gonna clean my hot basket out because I actually might use it again, depending on how dirty it is, to when I transfer the beer to the uh, fermenter, see if I get more of that. Um, stuff out of it, and extra hops and whatnot. So this is a little messy, and this is hot as can be. So obviously, handle with care. It'll take a while to drip out. The hops are everywhere in there, stopping the beer from. Oh man! See, it's just dripping everywhere. Trying to get it out. I have to fast forward this part. And then you should have cooked enough to warm. Mm -hmm. You should have not cooked enough. There's more. There we go. Basically, the hops were all clogged in the bottom there, so got that going for me. Alright. So, I'm going to put this in here. In this sink. Let it cool.
cool off. And actually, actually, no, false. Let me see if I can reposition my hand here. I might use both mitts and dump in the trash can. Because I don't want that clogging on my sink. I'm going to put extra stuff in the sink so you don't need to. All right. Hopefully it didn't spill too much. Let me get a good grip on this. I can wash these afterwards. One, two. Something's going to drip on the floor. I should do it this way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Problem solved here. There we go. And the rest. Let's clean up in the sink. So I'm going to clean this right now. And I'll let you know when I put it into uh, to cool off. All right, so now I cleaned it out, the uh, hot strainer. And I put these little heating pads, hot pads, and a rubber on the sink underneath it. The pot will go on top. This kind of makes it raise a little. Um, I don't really want to put it directly on the steel. Plug the sink up. Now you can do the same exact thing in, the, um, in your tub, bathroom tub if you have that. But I use my sink because it uses less water. And then, um, yeah, I'm gonna fill it back up. So I'm gonna put the, the wart in here to cool off. Bring that over. Very hot, be careful. I'm gonna actually put the top back in because I don't want anything really gonna get into it. But I'll crack it so it lets some air get out. And now I'm gonna add some cold water to the sink. Let's fill up. And what I usually do, what I usually do is I'll fill up one time with cold water, uh, let it go for like 30 minutes, then take it out and do it again, and then I'll add ice the second batch there. Uh, but because it's so hot, the cold water comes from the sink at like 50 some degrees. There's enough of a contrast to it, rapidly cool. So the goal here now is to cool this as fast as possible, so then we can add it to our fermenter. Okay? So. I'm going to cool it off and play a waiting game again. All right, so I'm now doing the second round of water, cold water, uh, where it's coldest from the tap here. I just add some ice to go a little faster. Uh, sometimes that is, here, I'll put the top down so I'll get it going in. And you can buy ice. Ice is better than my freezer. Put it back. Let's see it. Can you can see it, yeah. It's no more ice. No more ice. Then, let's let it fill back up again. And then, uh, probably another 15, 20 minutes will be ready for me to transfer it. So, not too bad, but it cools off pretty fast this way. So now I'm about to smack the liquid yeast. I've never done uh, a liquid yeast, actually. I've always done dry yeast. But I want to try it this time. So the directions say on the back, uh, locally, locate, there's an internal nutrient pack in a corner, so I find it and put it in the corner. I'm assuming it's down here now. And then you're supposed to smack it. Now, smack firmly and hope it'll pop. That's like the main thing I'm worried about. So I put it in the corner. Let's see what happens here. Where did it, where did it go? Just making sure I got it here. So the nutrients are in the little pack that's in there. There's a small pack that says. Well, I'm going to make sure. Oh, there we go. Oh, there it is. Yeah. See, I don't know how I'm going to smack it. I wish it was like a sound. As you, and you're watching my trial and error. That was the sound I was looking for. All right, nothing broke out, I'm making sure. But I heard it. Yeah, now I can't feel the pack anymore individually. So, it's gonna activate. Now it says three hours. I, of course, forgot to do this earlier. But it's all right, three hours at room temperature. And then you can add it. All right, seven, three hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It's roughly our room here. Now, um, hopefully it'll start swelling, but they said it's not the end of the world. If it um, doesn't swell all the way, you can still just add it and they're good to go. 
but just trying to get it to go in here. So I'm gonna leave it here, let it swell. Put this way so you can see it. And then when the wort's cool down, we'll add the yeast in our fermenter. All right, so now it's, it's like 80 some degrees. That should be plenty. I'm gonna take it out of the water. I'm gonna for a second. Oh, did you get the guns? Got it. <laughs> now you empty this water out. Nice and cold. Let these hopefully dry at some point. All right. So, this is the trickier part. This is where you have to be more careful about sanitation. All right. So, main thing is, I've already sanitized my kegerator. That's enough. It's okay. I've already sanitized my keg rater, just left some star sand in there. Dump the little bit left over, just get rid of it. But I'm going to plan ahead here and uh, put this on the floor for a second. I made a little contraption. Oh, thank you. I don't need that, but thank you. See. I made a contraption that it's like a little net thing that's going to rest on top because it's easier for me to carry it. So I'm going to put it into my freezer. So if we can see that here. So I put it here down below and rest it on top, roughly where it needs to be. All right. Makes it easier to carry. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to use, here's all my cleaning stuff, okay? And this is where it gets a little tricky. I one time used this hot basket in here to get the yeast out, or the wart out, but it kept clogging on the outside and then nothing was getting through. So today, I'm going to do the opposite, so I'm going to take my sponge, make sure everything's just clean. This is my sanitized sponge. And just kind of make sure everything is just clean in here. Just double checking it. All right. Good to go. Okay. Don't want any bacteria in there. All right. So now, this, if I remember correctly from last time, now I could be wrong, and then we'll deal with it there. I haven't, I don't always do this step, but I kind of said I was going to do it earlier, so I'm going to do it. Put it in here. I think, if I remember correctly, did it fit in all the way? Yeah. It fit in all the way. I hope it doesn't tip over. Then, I want to make sure this whole tube is clean. So what I usually do is just kind of make sure the outside of the star stand solution it is kind of done. I've already cycled through a couple times. The chew has been sitting in the star stand, so everything's pretty much clean. Um, we're good to go. So, I from here, I'll do a couple pumps. Just be careful. I like I did the uh, liquid earlier. It can't shoot out, but I'll pump it to make you know cycle through the star stand solution throughout the tube to make sure we're good. All right. Now this is the tricky part. It's gonna. You don't want it to, it's going to leak everywhere. And I don't want the star sand, so I'll put it in the sink. And I get most of it out. Most of that liquid just going to leak out. Okay. And this is the magic rack system. It's pretty good for racking the beer. I used to pour it, it made it more annoying, to be honest. All right, so it's okay, you're going to get some things everywhere. So I'm going to put the tube inside this hot basket thing. Hopefully it doesn't fall down. There. I'm going to put this in here. And then, what's beauty about this is that it's a very simple system. And once it's going, it's a siphon. So I just make sure it's in there at the bottom. And now the beer is getting siphoned into the fermenter. And what I end up actually doing, once this is full, I'll angle this up, I'll prop something underneath it to angle it up in there. And then we have to get it to a total of five gallons. So there's only like three or two and a half, three gallons of liquid in here. We want to bring it to five gallons total. So we add water in there, it's going to be cold water. This is where I use one of these tubes, these things actually, because mainly because my sink uh, hose doesn't go that far. So I actually end up filling this up with, I clean it first, sanitize it, fill it with water, cold water, and then I'll just move the tube over to this and transfer it that way as well. So you'll see me do that uh, when this is done transferring, but it doesn't take too long, a couple minutes. So, so there's some 
leftover trube, it's called, here. There's only a trip in there. Uh, that's it. Let's make sure that doesn't go in there without the sink. Clean it out. And now I'm siphoning from water here. So I've been filling this up with water. I'm just going to keep an eye on this. Make sure when it hits five gallons, we're done. But I just moved over to my water tub here. Cold water. Here's the right temperature. And then we'll move it to our freezer. And I'll go talk about that when we get there. So right now it's about to hit five gallons of total liquid. And so I'm going to stop this from coming out here. I don't want any more water getting in there. I'll dump this out right now. Then I want to make sure I don't drop the little metal thing in there. Let's make sure my fingers are a little clean. Going in there. I'm going to reach in. Do my best. If I can even get it out. How am I going to get this out? And I use my other fingers now, but it's luckily out. All right. All right. Drip, drip, drip. I mean, it's not much. This step probably wasn't really necessary, to be honest. But we got it out. Here. Put it in. Here. Done. So, now, I'm going to add the yeast in there. Now, the yeast hasn't been waiting the three hours, but on the packet it says, you don't really have to. So, I'm not going to. But well, you do need to clean the outside of the yeast, the whole yeast packet. So I'm going to dip the whole thing in the star sand. I'm going to make sure the whole thing's clean. No bacteria is on it. Okay, and hopefully the inner packet I don't get out. Oh, actually, before I do that, you're supposed to aerate it. So to aerate this, use this. I'm going to clean it out a little bit the top. To aerate the beer, you basically just want to rock it back and forth close this down just because I don't want stuff getting everywhere. Less likely if it moves around. But I'm just going to rock it back and forth. It's like a good 30 seconds to a minute. But uh, you don't, there's like aerating machines and stuff for this. But you're just trying to get some air into the warp. Move it around some for the yeast. But it has a nice dark color, which I like. So I don't know, we're probably at 20 seconds now. I don't know how important this aeration really is, but it probably just helps the yeast get started, to be honest. Okay. Pretty much done now. Put the top off. Seal right here. I'll take the yeast packet here. Alright, now the yeast packet. Open up. We're gonna pour it in. Now, hopefully, I've never poured this before, so. Oh, I see the packet inside, so I'm gonna pinch that. Make sure it doesn't come out. Oops, smells like yeast. Uh, pour it in. That should be everything. Yeah. There we go. So now, I'll put some trash can. Please, yeah. Sanitize this top thing one more time for good measure. Bring it back out. Now notice I don't have the airlock here on it yet. I'll do that at the end once I put it in my freezer. So now I gotta go to my freezer, make sure it's open and available, and we'll go from there. So this is like my little strap system. It goes around. It allows me to lift it like this, and then I can walk it over to my office, where the keg or the, the freezer is. Okay. All right, so I'll put this in inside my freezer. Oopsie. Freezer. All right. Has some duct tape, tape on this, the thermometer. It goes, and I'll show you what that looks like. So I put this in here. Make sure it's lined up. And this cord here, if you can see, go around this way. I have a regulator right there, and it's set to 20 degrees Celsius where it needs to be, and that will regulate this whole thing roughly. Now I put this thermometer next to the uh, beer itself to help better have a better temperature. Now better systems have a thermometer that goes in the inside, but here's what it is. So now I gotta put 
the airlock on. Let me done. So this is the airlock. If you can see it here, I put it in. Uh, this has the star stand solution in it. Make sure it's sanitized liquid. And there we go. Now we're gonna close it and wait. Uh, where's my thing? So I'll close it and wait. And then in a couple of days, I'll check to make sure it's actually fermenting. So now you know how to brew beer using a kit system here. And this wasn't all grain, it was just a partial grain for steeping, but it uses an extract uh, syrup there for that. We did a dry Irish stout, and then we went through the process of how to brew the beer, turning it to wort, then we cooled it down, and now we put it in the fermenter. Now, there are options here to do a secondary fermenter, and I don't really do that, to be honest. I will just use one the whole time, and that's it, and it's been turning out fine. That's another step, but if you want to do that, you can always use a secondary fermenter. That helps make it a little clearer and less sediment in there, but I feel like some of the stuff that we did has stopped that sediment. Now, I will be putting this beer into my kegerator kegs in about a month or so. If you don't have a kegerator, most people don't, they will use bottles when they're starting out. I did that. There is process, plenty of, or plenty of videos online how to put this into bottles, but basically you're putting in a little bottle, you put some sugar in there, you leave some space, sanitize everything, you cap it, and then that's going to carbonate it. And you wait like two weeks and you're good to go. My kegerator doesn't need extra sugar to carbonate. I use CO2, which will then carbonate this beer and I'll uh, drink it straight from the draft. If you're thinking or debating about going from bottles to a kegerator, it is a game changer because I got really tired of cleaning all those bottles and then only drinking from those bottles. Okay, so a kegerator is definitely worth it if you have the funds for that. So I'll see you in about a uh, couple days. We'll double check the beer to make sure it uh, is fermenting. Then about a, within a month, we'll do a cold crash of that beer, and I'll show you that shortly. And then we'll put it in a kegerator. Then we will enjoy it. So see you when that happens. So you can see now. So a couple days later, there's a lot of foam going on. So we can see we have activation of the fermentation. I don't want to put too much light on there. It's kind of dark in my freezer, but there you go. It's fermenting. It's actually fermenting quite a lot. So I'm going to move that uh, thermometer, make sure it's touching the side barrel, and then I close this up. So we can see, uh, hopefully you can see the numbers there, but uh, I've been cold crashing it for a couple of days, the beer. It's 9 degrees Celsius, and I set to 1 degrees Celsius, so just above freezing here. And we can go see what it looks like in the freezer. Fridge turn freezer. So the chest freezer here, you can see, uh, especially with the cold crust, it's, it's done fermenting. But it definitely had, you can see, hopefully you can see that later, is the, the fermentation went pretty high there. It's pretty vigorous. Um, there's the thermometer, so I'm going to unplug the thermometer, and I'm going to use my little straps here to go carry this. To the counter uh, to transfer. So you can see here, it's pretty cold, uh, just above freezing, and all the yeast is sitting right at the bottom. So the whole point of cold crashing is to bring all that sediment and yeast to sit at the bottom. I didn't do a secondary fermentation here. We can see, wow, it's a very vigorous fermentation. Got pretty high. It's the first time using liquid yeast, so that might be the reason. But. Anyway, see so how it turned out. So now we're going to transfer that. I've cleaned out my uh, sex bowl keg right there. Uh, it has a clean stuff in it right now. I'm going to rinse it out and we'll do the, the whole transfer here. So you can see here, I have the magic rack going in. The beer. <laughs> that was a mega video, honey. And then the beer goes down here. The tube. The tube all the way in. It's all sanitized. You can see that in there. And then, if I can get this shot, you just kind of got to pump this. I can do it one handed. But. And then it goes. You can see it going down now. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the time that if you had bottles instead, you would. Uh, you can use that little siphon down here. I don't like to. Uh, I used to get. I used to do that and I got a lot of sediment that would transfer over, and this racking system seemed to be better. Um, this is where you would bottle it, and I do it differently because I'm using a keg. So now it's got to play the waiting game and wait till the whole thing comes out. So the transfer just finished. You can see the inside here. Not much left. You see that's the yeast at the bottom. Nastiness on the inside. 
and all the beer is right in there. You can see that light. There we go. So the top. So I'm gonna put the top onto this. I'm gonna hook it up. All right. So what I got here. Make sure you're on the right one. Beer out. CO2 in. It's all sealed up. I do a couple. Um, here's my regulator in here. Drive. So I'll be flipping this switch here. Right there. To turn on. So this is the left one for this keg here. Um, turn that on, the CO2 is going to be coming in. And what I listen for is to see uh, if air is coming out of the edge here, This uh, the connection to the top of the keg, the, uh, the corny keg. A few times, or actually only once, it wasn't a right seal, and I was losing CO2 and I can hear a little hiss. So I kind of like here for that, but it seems good. Then I'm going to un, turn this off, so I already filled up with CO2. Turn it off for a second, I'm going to let the CO2 out here. Ooh, more electrocular, a little slower, huh? <laughs> and what that's doing is, I just want to make sure, put more CO2 back in, that only CO2 is in here and no more oxygen. So, it's kind of going through. And pro tip, make sure your, your keg tap isn't open right now. <laughs> all, that, all that keg stuff, the drink will come right out. So I'm going to close this one more time, let out the CO2. Slowly. All right, and then that's it. Now it's ready. It's just gonna take a couple days for it to carbonate. And then I'll be able to drink it. So I'm gonna put it in there, fit it in there, and be good to go. All right, so now it's all done. It's carbonated and ready to enjoy. So we can pour it out here. It has a nice dark color to it. Decent head. Nice pour. Last nice little drip, drink here. You can see that right there. Come on a little closer. You can see what it looks like. Nice creamy, creamy look to it. All right. So, thanks for watching. Cheers, and uh, hopefully you learned how to brew your own beer, and you can do it yourself easily. Have a good day. No, we don't drink beer, but you can help me make it. Mm-hmm. Coffee? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. How long do you think this beer is going to take? Uh, 100 minutes. Uh, actually, that's, that's probably a good estimate, 100 minutes. 100 minutes. 100 minutes, yeah. I mean, it has to boil for 60 minutes, but it can take about 100 minutes. Maybe a little for the, this part. Should I add this tool too? Or should I set the tape? Just sit on you. Sit on you? Yeah. Mm. I can see my face, Dad. Who's dirty? You can see your face. I'm here. Oh, you can see your face in there. <laughs>